Hello, my name is William Kumwembe, welcoming you to this week's edition of the program Business Time. This is a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And in the program today, we look at the role of architects uh, on Malawi's drive to creating secondary cities as the construction industry has for quite some time been in the news but for the bad reasons. And also in the program, we speak to the National Bank of Malawi on its role towards facilitating access to capital for SMEs in the country. That's inside business time. Hello and welcome. My name is William Kumwembe and this is business time. In our main story in the program today, Malawi is implementing the Malawi 2063, the country's long-term development plan, which would see the country become a middle-income economy, at least within the next four decades. Now, one of the key pillars is the creation of secondary cities. The National Planning Commission, NPC, which is a government entity mandated to create and oversee implementation of the development plans, says the country's architects need to play a critical role towards creation of the secondary cities. NPC Director General Thomas Montali was speaking recently at the 40th Annual General Meeting for the Malawi Institute of Architects. We have the detail in this report. Addressing the delegates, Muntali said creation of secondary cities in line with the urbanization pillar in the Malawi 2063 document would require direct involvement of the architects. He said the country's major four cities, Blantyre, Zomba, Lilongwe and Mzuzu, which collectively contribute close to 40% to the national gross domestic product, have slammed over the years. According to Montali, a review of the city's plans and creation of new ones to be aligned with aspirations in the Malawi 2063 would help towards national wealth creation. The Malawi 2063 as a vision has the urbanization as one of the key pillars. And without an architect, we may not effectively deliver on that particular pillar. And so uh, I think pushing that message to them uh, that we want to work closely with them as we're planning around urbanization as a nation, including the secondary cities master plan that we have in place, will require the services of uh, the architects so that we are more uh, foresighted in future looking, in planning for cities uh, that we can be proud of. Currently, the four cities uh, are slamming, have slammed a lot, uh, but if we have new plans that are looking into a future uh, where we can plan without slamming at the moment, then we have a big opportunity. And, uh, I think it goes without saying that the, the uh, cities or urban centers are contributing significantly to the country's growth. For example, the, just the four cities alone are contributing close to 40% of our gross domestic product. So if we have effectively planned uh, cities across the country and urban centers, uh, this would be very key. And one of the messages that we're emphasizing to them was to make sure that um, they proactively take a role in uh, defining the urbanization agenda. They don't have to wait for the authorities to invite them to the table, uh, but to proactively put themselves forward, including adopting some of the secondary cities and coming up with the uh, master plan of architectural designs where we can bring investors uh, uh, towards that. He then called on the industry players to consider adopting, designing and effectively developing the cities using international standards. Malawi Institute of Architects immediate past president Catherine Sani said the players in the industry are systematically positioned to contribute toward creation of all structured cities. This is, um, we have been asking for a place at the table um, and I suppose by making the statement today, now the ball has been thrown back into our courts. Um, we need to regroup, we need to think how we are going to take this challenge because to be given an opportunity to say one of the cities can be a mere city, it really takes a proper strategic planning, decision making that needs to happen with the next council and uh, the next leadership that is coming to place. But I think speaking as to what has led to this moment, we have been asking for this. Um, we are taken by surprise that it's been given, so now it's a chance to respond um, and not let people down because we've made a lot of noise. So now the ball is going to be in our court to live up to those expectations. Meanwhile, the institution says it has concluded drawing first draft of a proposed law that would regulate the industry separate from quantity surveyors. 
Attorney General Tabo Chakaka Nyuenda said a review of the legal framework is essential to draw the necessary lines between the two professions. I also identified it as a weakness, uh, a weakness in terms of uh, that uh, act um, um, governing two professions. Um, I think something that needs actually to be agently looked into and reviewed because uh, having two professionals or professionals in one act, they tend to confuse the laws and that's why you find that uh, uh, situations where quantity surveyors are doing work that are not supposed to do, that's a work that is a specialized work for the architects. So it's a valid point and which is why I'm saying that uh, it's now high time, I think maybe this is the appropriate time that uh, that act were to, or the proposed law were to come before Parliament for it to be um, debated, maybe perhaps passed by parliamentarians and later on ascended to by the President. And it's high time that that law uh, is reviewed. Because this is a law, of course, the fact that the law is old doesn't mean that the law is bad. But since the 1991 law, there are so many things that have come uh, to bear and issues to do with the changes in the environment, the social environment, the climate change. And then this time around we're talking about the tropical cyclones, tro tropical storms. That actually demand that uh, uh, actors should increasingly be called upon to work with the citizens, the population, in terms of uh, in the built environment, uh, in terms of when we're coming up with structures, uh, whether these are offices, whether we're coming up with houses and the like. So for that to be done properly, we need to have a, few, a profession that is properly specialized, and for that specialization to be meaningful, we need to have um, a regulation that specifically targets that profession, and that's the profession of the architects. Over the years, the sector, along with the quantity survey, has been operating in line with provisions of the Architects and Quantity Surveyors Act. Meanwhile, the Malawi Institute of Architects has ushered in new president, Kumbo Chirwa, who is taking over the mantle from Catherine Sun, who has served as president of the institute for about three years. We caught up with Chirwa to find out his vision. The, the, first, the first thing is regulation. We want to push uh, we want to push that there is regulation, or in some cases where the regulation exists, it must be enforced. Okay? So, so we don't have um, unqualified people uh, working in our cities. Okay? That's one. The second one, um, we want to be seen to be relevant. We want to be seen to be relevant. We want to be seen that we can add value because sometimes maybe people don't know that we exist. And so um, uh, for the past two years, for example, uh, the, the, the previous president, uh, her vision was, uh, was relevance and visibility okay? because we wanted to, to be visible and we want to be relevant. So there's regulation, then there's our part to be visible and to be relevant. Coupled with this, we want we want to to, to now push um, government. Uh, various speakers yesterday talked about uh, uh, where if we are not being invited to the table, we must go there, take our chair and sit there and and and, and contribute until these people uh, or the people in power recognize that oh these guys are here to stay, these guys are adding value. We made a mistake by not including them, but now they are here. Uh, we are saying the architect is very important um, in the development of, of, of any nation. Okay. Um, one 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 famous uh, uh, one one famous uh, architect said that when God created the world, He left it to architects to, to continue with the creation. And so our our, our duty is to create spaces, to create not just spaces, but beautiful spaces. We create places where people can live, places where people can play, places where people can, can get entertained. And so the role of the architect is very critical in this aspect, not just in the next five years, but uh, up to 2063 where we are planning our, our vision. And, and that's why maybe this year we are asking where is the architect as our theme? Because in this 2063 vision, where does the architect fit in? And if we, if we leave out this architect, then we are not going to end up with the Malawi that we, that we want or the, or, or, or the cities that we are looking for. 
um, I mean, you, you will agree with me that sometimes what we see out, say, out, out there, as you are saying, uh, does not befit even a third world country. I mean, uh, sometimes we, we look like we are a small, a small or rather a big village with just uh, uh, electricity here and there. But we need to graduate from there and we can only do that when the architect is involved. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumwembe. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And my name is William Kumwembe. Moving on with the program. Malawi is a landlocked country and it is costly for people and firms to ferry goods from overseas into the country. Amid the challenges, uh, the role of freight handlers is very critical in the equation. One of the firms offering the service is Universal Freight Solutions, whose managing director is Mark Williams Mohone. I caught up with Mohone to find out the positioning of the firm and the need for Malawi to take a step towards having a competitive edge, regardless of its situation. Generally, when you're talking about universal freight solutions, um, basically we, we are into transport, we are into customs clearing, we are into shipping and forwarding, we are into removal, uh, we are also into removal in terms of the households. I could say as universal freight solutions, uh, we believe in efficiency and vision. Um, I'll give an example. Um, we have been in operation close to four years now, down the line. Um, we believe to say it's not who start what. But what are you going to deliver to the customers? Okay, very simple example. You have seen our place here. We have got a big yard where we can pack 20 to 30 trucks. We have got a big warehouse that we can able to accommodate in all the imports, even the exports. So, and in, in a simple, even just to add, we are just close to the M1 that uh, whoever comes using the M1, you pass us here. So we believe we have got in a good position in terms of the place, in terms of the facilities that we have, in terms of the professionals, uh, uh, team that we have, and we believe we have got capacity to deliver uh, what the clients demand from us. On the first place, we are Malawians, and we believe we're not talking about 2063. That's the goal for the nation, and that's the goal for a family. That's the goal for the country at large. Now, when when you look on um, uh, what we planted out there about the Malawi 2063, there's a blueprint there. Uh, there's job creation there. The, the, the moment we came in to open this company, we've created some jobs, okay? Now look, look about. We have got the guys in the borders. All the borders, the guys are there. We have created that job. If if that helps these guys, they will also help to their families that are going. Don't forget that the, by the end of the day, we are also contributing to the national development in terms of the economy. We we are into three things that we want to do in the next couple of years. One, we want to have the company that will have one post, one border, one, one post center. When I'm talking about the one post center, we have the warehouse, we have the container depot, and we have the parking yard. That's, that's our vision where we are going. We, we, we have done this part, but we are looking now beyond those lines. And also, we want to be the company that um, uh, the global world knows that there's universal freight solutions in Malawi. If somebody wants to work, even all the NGOs, they should know that uh, we have got integrity, um, uh, we have got the skilled labor, 
we have got the facility that we're able to deliver, even the project shipment, big project shipment. So that's what the future holds for us. We are here to deliver our best and we have got the ability that we can do more than this. And also this message goes to all Malawians in terms of the young entrepreneurs, that there's potential in Malawi, there's possibility that we can deliver. But the message, the message should be, let's have focus, let's have vision, let's have integrity. If we follow these rules, I believe and I have hope that Marians will not be the same in the next years. Now, in other business news, National Bank of Malawi has outlined limitations on business planning, management, bookkeeping, and financial prudence among factors that are limiting local SMEs from accessing capital. This was said recently when the bank hosted a training for SMEs on a number of areas. Its head of retail banking is Oswin Kasunda. He caught up with a journalist, Chimwe Mangazi, who has filed this report. National Bank head of retail banking, Oswin Kasunda, says limited skills in marketing and employee management also hinders chances of SMEs to access funding. He was speaking recently during a business breakfast for SMEs in Blantyre. So as the National Bank of Malawi, we do realize we do realize that um, uh, our business, we have good business partners. And one segment uh, that uh, comprises of our business partners are the SMEs. Today we have organized this uh, uh, SME break, uh, breakfast uh, function. First of all, I think you should be aware that uh, it is our tradition as a bank to engage our customers on a regular basis. In fact, on a yearly basis, on a yearly basis we do have programs to reach out to our customers in various parts of the country. But for the past two, three years, we have not had these uh, functions because of the because of the problem that the country faced, the, the cyclones and the and other disasters. We thought that this time around we should bring them back and they have a, a quiet place with them so that we can uh, share with them our experiences in terms of how we have done business with them. But at the same time, we need to get feedback from them in terms of how uh, they are doing their business and how they have been affected uh, by the uh, happenings in the, in the economy. So the main purpose of meeting them is to share experiences and get feedback from those customers. In, in an economy uh, like this one, you are right. The pandemics, the wars uh, globally have affected uh, the performance of the economy. But that does not mean that uh, we must sit back. Um, you know, Banks will always be there to support, even in times when the economies are not doing well. Customers will need the banks to survive. Customers will need the banks to do their businesses. Yes, interest rates uh, can be high because interest rates are a factor of what is happening in the economy. But um, trade has to continue uh, in an economy like this. So we can't stop engaging the customer just because the economy is doing well. In fact, by engaging the customers, what we want at the end of the day is for them to improve. Because we share ideas on, on, on how they can overcome some of the changes that they are facing. And we expect that through that, then they're going to improve their businesses. We're going to support them with financing. And at the end of, at the, end of the day, the economy grows. The economy, there will be, the economy is like a cycle. Yeah? There, will be, there will be periods when the, when the economy is low. There will be periods when the, when the economy grows. So that's the, that's the, that's the typical uh, cycle of, of an economy. Small and Medium Enterprise Development Institute Business Information and Advisory Services Officer for the South Comstone Soko adds that low literacy levels and low capitalization remain key constraints to the growth of SMEs. These kind of workshops are what this sector needs. You know, the SME sector, one of the biggest challenges that they are facing for them to grow is access to finance. And uh, we commend National Bank for organizing uh, a breakfast uh, event like this one because it will enhance the kind of uh, partnerships that are there between uh, the private sector and the, and, and, uh, and, the, and the public sector, which is ourselves, in terms of helping the SMEs access finance. As you have rightly put it, uh, access to finance is one of them, but also would say uh, market is, is, is a serious challenge. Uh, but in terms of market, we can also go further to say the delays in payment, and we want to put it on record here that from the SME sector, we're very, very happy with what the government has recently announced, 
that uh, the aging treasury to pay SMEs and to expedite those payments that are due for SMEs. So if, if, if that can be solved, I think we are on the right path to achieving our agenda 2063. There are so many policies that I think uh, need to be looked holistically and we cannot just be mentioning in isolation, but obviously one of the directions that the government and the private sector has taken, especially banks, is to digitalize the process. So we, we believe that uh, uh, through uh, digital platforms like mobile phones, internet, more and more SMEs can be able to access uh, uh, the, these financing services. Because you know, uh, most of these financial services providers are located in urban areas, but yet we have many SMEs in rural areas. Through services like phones or internet and other digital platforms, we believe access to finance and access to these services can, can, can be resolved. One of the SMEs who attended the business breakfast, who is also managing director of House of Men, Brenda Jidanda, had this to say. This meeting is very important because it has um, highlighted uh, the importance of us. Um, it has highlighted the importance, of, the importance of us going to the bank when we want to get loans and everything. So this meeting has helped us quite a lot to know which loans we're supposed to get and how we can meet our bankers. Now, as uh, women, sometimes you have challenges in terms of uh, when you want to access these loans. And uh, National Bank is saying that they have come up with uh, special products for you and uh, they're calling it Amai Angate. What will you say uh, about this? Yeah, Amai Angate is a very good package for us women in Malawi because uh, the National Bank has maybe removed some some concentrates that, that, that we, they, as women, we're failing to to get the loans, things like collateral. Women, you know in Malawi, we don't have collateral as women. So when we go to the bank, we are failing to access the loans. But now that there's a mighty guard, we, we can now walk with the banks and get money freely. Recent figures from the World Bank show that only 10% of medium enterprises, 5% of small enterprises, and 3% of micro enterprises have direct access to credit from commercial banks. Well, that story also brings us to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Stay safe and bye for now.